Hi, welcome back. You're watching MF Corner and joining in now we have Mrin Agarwal who's a financial educator and director of FinSafe India. And Mrin, before we begin, I want to congratulate you for having trained what over 1 lakh people, uh, you know, in the best, uh, uh, you know, best of breed of uh, financial education. So kudos to you and I'm so happy to see so many people, uh, you know, picking up the mantle of uh, financial education in India. So well done. Thank you very much, uh, you know, for doing this great service. Thank you, Sumera. Okay, so now the topic we're discussing today is how NRIs can invest in India and, you know, what are the various obstacles they have to cross. So first things first, you know, is every option available to them uh, for investment? And within that, uh, you know, how do mutual funds stack up? I mean, are they superior in any manner? Well, uh, there are various investments. Traditionally, if you see, NRIs have preferred investing in real estate. It has been the go-to investment. When we look at financial assets, uh, you cannot do small saving schemes, but you can pretty much do, of course, fixed deposits. Uh, you can invest into PMS as well. You can invest into stocks. Now, um, it, and of course, you can invest into mutual funds. Uh, when we look at each one of these investments, uh, clearly, I think physical investments or physical assets like real estate, I think are a big no, because honestly, monitoring it sitting in another country is not at all easy. And these days, it's very difficult to find people who are going to take care of that property for you. Plus, if you look at the TDS on rent, you know, there's so many other issues involved. Uh, on the financial asset side, of course, fixed deposit rates are quite low. Um, if you look at direct stocks, uh, you need to open something known as a PIS, which is Portfolio Information Scheme account with certain banks and have a trading account that's linked to it. And these investments are actually monitored. Uh, uh, so, you know, it, th they are, there are various limitations uh, to these particular investments. And hence, I think, you know, mutual funds turn out to be a good bet because they can be easily invested into. There are no sort of limitations or it's not like you need to invest it through us. Uh, I mean, of course, you need to invest it through an NRE or an NRO account. But other than that, it's pretty easy to invest. And you basically have the whole variety of mutual funds that's available uh, to you uh, uh, for investment. Okay, so now if somebody were to look, an NRI were to look at starting their uh, mutual fund investment, what kind of uh, hoops would they have to jump through? Okay, so the paperwork is a little tough because you need to have a PAN card firstly. Um, the second thing is uh, you need to come in person for the IPV. Now, there is IPV, which is the in-person verification. You can go to the embassy, but I don't think it's going to be very easy to do that. Um, so ideally, you will have to, you know, one time do the uh, KYC once when you are in India. And of course, you need to provide the uh, normal documents like identity proof, bank proof, uh, proof of residence in the foreign country. And you'll have to do the IPV. And, um, and essentially, that's, that's the main thing. There are specific rules for uh, US and uh, Canada NRIs that are followed. So not all mutual funds uh, allow investments from them. And even if some of them do allow them, they want them to be come here in person. This is specifically for US NRIs. Uh, they are expected to come in person and make the investment. So they'll have to keep some of these factors in mind. They cannot invest online. Okay, uh, what about the taxation? So the taxation is the same as it is for resident Indians in terms of tax that's deducted in India. See, typically for any NRI, they're going to have to pay tax in their uh, country of residence. And India has a double taxation treaty, I think, with about 95 countries. Uh, so the first thing is that as far as taxes in India are concerned, the tax rates are the same. So the same capital gains uh, taxation applies for NRIs except that in case of NRIs at the time of redemption, that amount is deducted as a TDS. So for example, the long-term capital gains on equity funds is 10% above one lakh rupees in India. So that, that amount will, have to, will be deducted by the fund house so that it's gonna be the 10% plus the surcharge plus the cess 
which is going to be deducted by the fund house. Unlike for resident Indians, where you basically uh, file those in your ITR. Also on dividends, there is a 20% TDS that is there. Hmm. So this is one part of it. The second part of it is what do you pay in your country of residence? So let us say that the capital gains in your country of residence is 30% and you have paid 10% in India. Due to the double taxation treaty, you will be allowed a tax credit for what you have paid in India. Hmm. The point number three, and this is specifically for uh, US NRIs because you know we have a large number of US NRIs investing in India, hmm. that in US, uh, the investment companies are classified as passive or active. So mutual funds in India are actually classified as PFIC, which is passive foreign investment company. And the taxation on capital gains is going to be 40% on equities. Wow. So uh, as an investor, as an NRI investor, these are the three things that you will have to keep in mind, that you will have to file your taxes in India. You will have to see uh, what is the double taxation treaty. Mm. And for US NRIs and maybe any other country, you will have to see if there are any other specific laws mm. that are going to apply to this investment. Okay, Amrin, um, in terms of fund recommendations, what would you recommend? I mean, is it any different from uh, how, say, uh, domestic investors invest? Well, yes, because I would say that any NRI who's investing in India, they're doing it because they want an India-specific exposure. Mm -hmm. And um, if you, uh, so I think an index fund or a large cap fund will give them that India um, story, basically. Also, I believe that an actively managed mid-cap fund can be included because if you see actively managed mid-cap funds have given a good alpha. So again, if you're focusing on the India story, mm. a combination of an index or large cap and an actively managed mid-cap would be a good combination to give you a wide spectrum, basically. Mm. Got it. Okay, um, Rin, uh, we would have loved to talk more and, you know, I especially wanted uh, one more primer on, you know, exactly what you cannot miss, uh, but we're out of time on today's show, but we do promise to take it up later. So thanks very much, Rin, for joining in.